Whether you are visiting us for the first time or for the first time in a while, whether you are here to be fed or are here to feed others, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I would like to extend a special welcome to the Reverend David Campaz, who is the director at Silver Lake Camp and Retreat Center. He will be offering us our sermon this morning, as well as Brian Lapis, who is Silver Lake Ambassador. Is that a title that works for you? Okay. He will be offering our moment for outreach and social justice later on in the service. So thank you both for being here. This is Silver Lake Sunday, Camp Sunday, and so you can't see everyone. Those of you who are worshiping from home can't see everyone in the congregation, but I am dressed in what I would wear to camp, minus um, I don't have clothes from shoes on, so no ropes for me. But um, yeah, it's, it's just a fun day to celebrate our conference camp here in Connecticut, just a stone's throw away over in Sharon, and I am looking forward to hearing about what's New and exciting, so I'm glad that you are both here. A few announcements. Next Sunday after church, we will be assembling our period tasks downstairs in the fellowship room. We are doing really well collecting items. If you would still like to donate, um, the items that we are collecting are on the back of the bulletin, and it did go out in the e-blast. If you could bring all items by June 7th, which I believe is Wednesday, that way, if we need to go out and purchase additional items to complete the kit, that gives us some time to do so. If you would like to contribute but don't get to the store very often, we would also accept monetary donations to help defray the cost of either purchasing more items or the cost to process the kit. On June 15th at 7 o'clock, downstairs in the fellowship room, our Freedom to Read book group will be meeting. This month's books are um, the graphic novel Gender Queer, as well as Beyond Magenta. And I have been informed that the library now has plenty of those books. They are both quick reads, so if you haven't had a chance to grab them and are interested, um, I would strongly recommend you head over to the library. I have a copy of Gender Queer here that I am finished with. It took me about an hour. I read it in one sitting. So if anyone would like to borrow it, you are welcome. And even if you can't attend the discussion group on the 15th, give it a read. It will be worth your time, I promise. On June 23rd, we will have our free family movie night over in the parish hall at 7 o'clock. Um, we will be watching Descendants. Um, those of you who know me well know that that's my, one of my go-to movies, so I'm pretty excited. There will be snacks and drinks available, um, so I hope that you'll come and bring your friends. People of all ages have a great time at our movies. June 26th, after, no, it's June 25th, whatever that Sunday is. Fifth, sorry. June 25th, after worship, over in the parish hall, we will be having pie making. Is that correct? Okay. <laughs> where we will um, be making pies to then sell at our blueberry festival. So it's a great time. Many hands do make light work. And so I encourage you all to save the date of June 25th. Um, that is the day that Evan and I leave for our mission trip. So we most likely will not be here. <laughs> I can guarantee you we won't be at pies, but I'm not sure yet whether we'll be here either. But June 25th, um, watch for it in your e-blast and Come have a great time and help a great cause. Speaking of great causes, and then we'll move on to celebrations. Um, today from 11 to 3 o'clock, I believe, at First National, National Iron Bank in Norfolk, there will be a car wash and bake sale to help support the mission trip that Evan and I, along with members and friends of the Norfolk Congregational Church, um, to help support us on the mission trip to Camden, New York, that is happening the last week of June. So if you're not doing anything this afternoon, take a ride north, and um, I think it'll be fun. If there are no other announcements, are there any celebrations this morning? It is our tradition here to um, pick a nonprofit 
for each month to support through our celebration donations as well as some other donation opportunities. And this month is Silver Lake Camp and Retreat Center. So any donations made during this time will go towards that. And a reminder that you do not need to donate in order to celebrate. Please show me in, your call to, in the call to worship, which can be found in your bulletin. Awesome, wondrous God, dark, deep, and holy one, we come to feel the mystery of your name. Green, growing God, Christ of many stories and disciples, we come to hear the parable of your love. Bright, flashing God, blowing wind and Holy Spirit, we come to speak the gospel of your heart. 
distant yet intimate God, woven, puzzled, grained by time, we come to find the Trinity of your grace. I invite you now to stand as you are able, in body or in spirit, and join me in our gathering hymn number 275 in the New Century Hymnal, which is the Black Sound Book. Good morning. Um, this is probably the one of the most often said um, verses um, in the Bible. It's Genesis 1, 1, and who are you there too? Six days of creation, and then the seven. When God, let's see about the glasses. Yeah. Uh, when God began, began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was complete chaos and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, 
and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, and it was the last day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth, across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters, and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make humans in our image, according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the sky, and over the cattle, and over the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humans in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sun, and sea, and the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth, and every tree whose seed in its fruit you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus, the heavens and the earth were finished, and their multitude. On the sixth day, God finished the work he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day, and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In the day uh, that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. in the New Century Hymnal, which is the Black Sound book, um, 
not hymn number 624, but page number 624, you will find it there. Um, the response is at the top. Susan and the choir are going to allow us to hear it now, and so they'll sing it once, then we'll sing it with them, then I will read, and where you see the capital letter R, we will sing the response. <laughs>
end of so I know how much walking room do I have? Like, oh, All right. You can't climb the left wall. Is this a challenge? <laughs> Another day, perhaps. Uh, thank you. My name is David Camphouse. I am the director of outdoor ministries at Silver Lake Camp and Retreat Center, uh, just up the road here in Sharon, and have been there since January. Uh, we are rapidly approaching the start of camp. We are receiving our coordinators on the 18th of this month and start camp then on July 2nd. And so we are well underway as we put some of our last pieces together. And I want to um, extend an invitation to you to join us this coming Saturday uh, to help us put some of those last pieces in place. If you're willing to come volunteer for a little bit, uh, I know that Ayla, who has been organizing some of those things, who is our program director, uh, would be happy to receive the help. And certainly if you call ahead and let us know that you're coming, that helps us to plan a little bit better. Uh, but I bring also greetings from the rest of our staff at Silver Lake, but also uh, greetings from your executive ministers of the Southern New England Conference and the joy of working with that team and that body of individuals. I wanted to share with you a little bit this morning on the Trinity. Um, and... Uh, Jen will tell you that we went on a little bit of a, a fruitless hunt this morning uh, in a very real way. Uh, I tried to grab a couple things for object lesson, and, and then I realized, well, no, you guys can imagine just as well as if I had it, and then I'd be stuck with it and trying to figure it out. Uh, the first thing was an apple, and, and perhaps you've heard that God is like an apple, and that the skin is like Jesus, and, and the meat is like like the Holy Spirit that infuses everything. And then the seeds are like God that plants and grows and brings forth life, just as we heard in Genesis. And that's about as far as we get, because it begins to fall apart after that. The analogy doesn't quite hold, because we hear over and over in Scripture that God is the three in one, and that the Son is the Father, and the Father is the Spirit. And there is this ongoing chain. And so perhaps you've heard, and this is where it would really fall apart for me, is um, that perhaps God is like H2O, and that the solid form, the ice, is Jesus. And water that gives life to everything is then the Holy Spirit. And then that that we don't really see but we experience is water that is evaporated. And is then in our air, in our system. And again, we get stuck with it, it doesn't quite work. And when I get to that point, I remember a very important couple of problems about the Trinity. The first is all who attempt to teach on the Trinity are fools. And then I, I came across this one from Martin Luther some time ago. To try to deny the Trinity endangers your salvation. To try to comprehend the Trinity endangers your sanity. And yet, we approach this point in the church year, trying to approach an understanding of the Trinity that we can come back to. But I think it leaves us in a very important place, particularly when we start to think about what camp in particular offers. And it is this. It is the incomprehensible and approaching the incomprehensible. To give it a chance, there is 
a, another turn or phrase that was used that I told you that all who attempt to speak on the Trinity are fools. There was another one from one of the early church fathers, and I'm sorry that I don't remember which one, who said all who attempt to preach or teach on the Trinity are heretics. Because there is no way to adequately explain the Trinity. And so any variation thereof is going to leave you in heresy in one place or another. Because it isn't quite full. And I want us to be okay with that. And so I want you to hear me tell you asking the question of the incomprehensible and the things that we don't understand that allow us to live into those next moments. One of my great memories growing up in the church is going to men's breakfast. And I'd go to men's breakfast at 6 a.m. and have breakfast with them at 7 a.m., which meant that for an hour I was in the kitchen talking theology and work and other things with all of these men of my father's age. And then we would sit down and eat breakfast, and after breakfast we'd have a short Bible study or book study. And I can remember time and again, the men kind of going, well, I don't believe that. Does that make me a heretic? Well, I don't believe that. Does that make me a heretic? And then we walk through. Well, how did the church get to that place? How do we understand that? And that is one of my favorite gifts of faith. That we are allowed to ask the questions that are not okay. That leave us in those spaces that leave us wondering and guessing and sometimes being told in the church no, that's not okay. That's heresy. And we've excommunicated folks. We've killed folks. We've run them off in every which way. Because they didn't believe the right way. Or the right thing. And yet, we make a proclamation at Soledad that whoever you are, whatever you're coming, Whatever you believe, you are welcome here. And why can we say that so clearly and so resolutely? Because the questions are okay. The questions are the faith. The questions allow us to explore who God is to the people of the moment in the scriptures as we read them to ourselves in this moment and to all the people in between us. And that's a lot of folks. There's a lot going on. And sometimes we have to sit with that that doesn't quite line up. We read this morning Genesis 1 and the Genesis 1 creation of you realize that Genesis 1 is one of no fewer than six creation accounts in Scripture? And you go, six? No, 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 it's Genesis 1. Well, then read Genesis 2. And you get a second one. And there's a little bit of a difference there. And then there's one in Job. And there's the one that we read in Psalms today. There's perhaps the other one that starts out, and it's intentional. John does it this way. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Wait a second. That's another story, another beginning. And we begin to see that God speaks 
in different times and different places. The UCC has said for years, and I am ever so grateful for that, God is still speaking. Because we are not cessationists. When Jesus died and when the apostles died, that wasn't the end of God telling God's story. God is still working. And if God were not still speaking, we wouldn't be able to hear what God has to say. God is still speaking. And in that, we begin to listen to the stories. We can be, listen, we can be willing to listen to the heretical statements, the things that don't quite belong or don't quite line up with what we know or understand. And that's okay. And so I'm grateful when I sit with our youth, our adults, those that are there on retreat, those that are there for camp, and they say, what about this? I don't know that I believe that. When was the last time you were told, okay, it's okay that you don't believe that. It's not a requirement. You'll notice in the Great Commission, what is it that Jesus says? Teach them to obey all that I have commanded you. you notice he doesn't say, teach them to believe all that I believe. It's about the doing in the process of the belief. Go and be. He sends them to go and teach, to go and to baptize. And in the teaching, we learn for ourselves as well. There is one of those models at camp that I, I, I like, um, and it's been simplified in some ways, uh, and it's see, do, teach. We've got something new going on, and, and you don't know what to make of it. Watch it for a bit. See what's going on. Go ahead and do it once you've seen it for a while. And then when you've done it and you think you understand it, do teach. It is one of the gifts that our maintenance team regularly goes through in the summer. Well, I, I've never changed a light switch. I, I've never cut a board. See, do teach. It becomes more and more simple. It is a different form of Trinity, but it is about the same thing. God, the three in one, helps us through these motions and these actions and these questions of life. See, do, teach. Helps us in the same way. To get through the actions and questions of life. I invite you to continue to think about how you see, do, and teach and experience the fullness of the Trinity of God, the three in one Spirit. With that, I think our choir is going to sing.
On this Trinity Sunday, as we talk about the interconnectedness of God, one another, and the world, I thought including prayers for those around the world, in addition to our prayers for people and situations a little closer to home, would be appropriate. So let us be in the spirit of prayer. Creating, sustaining, redeeming one. Through the dance of your interwoven union, we are continually directed towards the heart of the cosmos, which is the beating pulse of love. We look through global headlines in our communities, our homes, and our very bodies, and at times find it impossible to sense the unitive thread of love. We experience how separation feels more like the story than interconnection. Separation from the earth. As fires raged in Nova Scotia, Canada, forcing thousands to flee their homes. The country of Guam, as it recovers from Typhoon Lamar, and the Philippines, as they prepare for typhoon season, where super typhoons have become the new normal. Activists say that the country is now in a constant state of climate emergency. The Guarani indigenous community in Brazil, after lawmakers approved a proposal that will gut indigenous land rights and environmental protection. We experience separation from each other, holy one. A new anti-gay law in Uganda that calls for life imprisonment of anyone convicted of homosexuality. A fire started maliciously in a secondary school dormitory in Guana that killed 19 children. Ongoing violence in Ukraine and Russia, in Israel and Palestine, in Sudan. We pray for all these places and many others fraught by fragmentation, hatred, grief, violence, and burden. You, God, Father, Mother, Child, Holy Spirit, are by your Trinitarian being the story of interconnection. You are the relational dance of love. We participate in this dance. The threads of interconnected love between us are seen in the quiet in almost invisible ways. Ukrainian mothers who went into Russia to get their special needs children who had been kidnapped by Russian soldiers. A United States carpenter who is using medieval techniques to create a new roof with a fire ladder to her Kadam Cathedral in France. For the past 25 years, Shamshu Dean, a resident of Trinidad and Tobago, has been helping families in the Caribbean find long lost relatives in India. He has helped over 300 people so far. Nepali guide, Gelgin Sherpa, who found a Malaysian climber shivering and clutching a rope in the area of Mount Everest called the Death Zone, where temperatures can dip to minus 30 degrees Celsius after a six day search. We give thanks for these movements of love and all the countless acts of goodness, patience, love, beauty, compassion, creativity and connection that weave across our relationships, communities, and world. As we gather together this morning, we pray for the following people and situations that are close to our hearts. We pray for Tim and Sharon, Debbie and Carol, Wayne, Dawn, Barbara and Patty. We pray for Cadence and Kaylee. We pray for those struggling with addiction, parents and youth navigating the end of the school year. We pray for graduates and all those experiencing transition in their lives. We pray for those whose lives have been and continue to be torn apart by violence, and for those whose voices continue to be silenced. We pray for Bruce McLeod and his congregation in Spencer, Mass, who lost their church to a fire this weekend. And we pray for the Ministry of Silver Lake Camp and Retreat Center for those who name a lot of them.
All this we ask in the strong name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. You know, before I get into my uh, written remarks, I just want to say that I grew up in eastern Connecticut and uh, started going to Silver Lake as a camper in 1982. I volunteered there as a summer dean. I'm a Silver Lake parent. And the point is that I've driven by this church probably a hundred times over the last 30 some odd years. And it's my first time inside this room. So it's good to be here. Finally, see what this inside looks like here in Goshen. So, Good morning, I'm Brian Lapis. I am the Dean of Fun in the Sun Conference, and as I mentioned, uh, also a Silver Lake parent. My kids, Avery and Zoe, grew up at Silver Lake and have served on camp staff and now are young adults in college and also now have become Silver Lake volunteers. And uh, on behalf of the staff at Silver Lake Camp and Retreat Center, the executive staff of the Southern New England Conference of the United Church of Christ, and all the Silver Lake volunteers, getting ready for our summer camp programs. Thank you for dedicating an entire worship service to the amazing experience of outdoor ministry for young people. I'd like to start these talks with some name dropping of some of the Goshen folks who have helped make Silver Lake the great place that it is. Names like Matthew Perkins. Yeah, Matt grew up in this church. We worked together at Silver Lake on camp staff from 1985 to 1989. Matt was the chef at Silver Lake, and the best pork chop I have ever eaten was prepared by Matt and cooked in the Silver Lake oven. No joke, the best pork chop ever. I love to eat. Uh, folks like Mark Beeman and Sean Morris, who are in uh, your choir, who when we have camp at Silver Lake, got a bunch of elementary school kids to create puppets and perform a puppet show. It's not as easy as it sounds, and it's quite fantastic to see it all come together. And of course, there are Pastor Sarah and Dan Perla, who have stepped outside of their comfort zone more than once to lead weeks of summer camp at Silver Lake. And oh yes, there are the Perla children, who are not so much children anymore. Lauren, OMG, <laughs> Ryan, and Evan, who have been great Silver Lake campers and are poised to be the Silver Lake leaders of the future. And it is about the future. The future leaders of our churches and our communities, building a future with good, kind, generous, and justice-minded human beings. And that future starts by sending your kids to camp this summer at the United Church of Christ Silver Lake Camp and Retreat Center. Why Silver Lake? It is Silver Lake's mission to provide experiences of inclusive and nurturing Christian community, opportunities to grow and participate as Christ's disciples, a model of sustainable environmental stewardship of God's world. We worship, learn, play, and serve together. We seek to provide truly be yourself. Silver Lake is grateful to Goshen Church of Christ Congregational for your generous support of UCC Summer Camp. I am exceptionally proud of the programs we offer at Silver Lake, and I am particularly proud of the week of camp I program, Fun in the Sun, July 9th through 15th for 7th through 9th graders. It's a week of running around, playing sports, and focusing on the collaboration part of sports over the competition parts of sports. Imagine Jesus as the head coach of your team. That's fun and sun. 
You can ask Lauren and Ryan about it. Evan, you never made it to Fun in the Sun. You kind of got COVIDed out there in 2021. 22, yeah. So we're just getting warmed up talking about Silver Lake. So please find David and I and uh, the Goshen Silver Lake folks after worship for more camp conversation. Thank you for inviting us. And as David mentioned earlier, you are invited to come see us and play with us at Silver Lake.
welcomed and the joy of welcoming others who give you thanks, O oh Lord. For the body of Christ, come to us in plate and cup and live by us in our journeys onward. We give you thanks and praise and promise. Amen. Our closing hymn is a fan favorite at Silver Lake. And I'm going to turn it over to Sean, who is going to give some instruction.
I invite you to join me in our comments mission, which can be found in our bulletin. Let us now go forth into the world in peace, being of good courage, holding fast to that which is good, rendering to no person evil for evil, strengthening the faint-hearted, supporting the weak, helping the afflicted, honoring all people, loving and serving the Lord, and rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. I offer you this benediction, that this Trinity Sunday, it is the subject of many sermons to talk and to train God. The doctrine of the Trinity does not attempt to explain God. It only explains to us in a very elemental way what God has revealed to us so far. To describe the tip of the iceberg above the water is not to describe the entire iceberg. So this day, as Christians, we affirm the Trinity, not as, as an explanation of God, but simply as a way of describing what we know about God. Let us go, sharing what we know, teaching, loving, hoping.